More importantly, we hope that through this event, we will be able to encourage our stakeholders and policymakers to use this data and evidence in refining existing programs and prompting other interventions to advance inclusive education in the country. So to formally begin our forum, may I request Attorney Alberto Muyot, Chief Executive Officer of Save the Children Philippines for the welcome remarks. sa office po ni Paulus Madobogas, si Attorney Derby Catarina uh, Martinez Negre, ang mga ito. Siya ay po magkaibigan from Mobile Foundation, who I've been uh, working with for more than 20 years. So, sir, yung mga uh, Saronon, okay, from uh, PVC BLT, Ms. Uh, Felicita J. Gonzalez, from UST, Professor Carlos Sandu Taco, from CWC, The Institute of Philippines is honored to have uh, the Philippine Institute of for Development Studies as a partner in holding this research forum toward the International Day of Children of uh, People with Disabilities. Lagi ko lang sabi children. Kasi po yung trabaho ngayon, children po. And recently, the Civil Children conducted a series of activities to celebrate, raise awareness, and call on duty bearers of stakeholders to continue the fight for the whole vision of children's rights. While the event symbolizes our commitment to advance the needs of all children, especially those who have been neglected and marginalized in the past, there is a lot more to be done to address the needs to remove barriers from, and especially within, education. In the light of this situation, Save Children focuses its innovative, life-changing development programs uh, for children in the most deprived and marginalized situations, including children with disabilities. Due to deeply entrenched social stigma and misconceptions about disability, children and youth with disabilities suffer from an intersectionality of vulnerabilities. This puts them at a very great disadvantage among their peers and renders them at risk of suffering from intergenerational poverty. This, of course, exacerbated by other factors such as the harsh impact of conflict, natural disasters, and emergencies. That is the kudari ko on social stigma. One of the things that uh, I encountered when I was working with uh, the As a response, the Children of the Philippines has been implementing its Kasali program. Ito po yung kabataan ang alin sa, sa lahat ibahagi. This was since 19, uh, This was since 2014 and it seeks to strengthen local and national systems that support inclusive education. Civil children's support on inclusive education has expanded from disability inclusion to a more encompassing inclusive education that addresses the needs of children who are members of indigenous communities, out-of-school children and youth, 
and those from other marginalized sectors. We are happy to open discussions and dialogues in inclusive education, which forums such as these provide everyone with an avenue to do so. Save the Children competes works closely with the Department of Education and other civil society organizations in advancing okay, the cause of marginalized children. This close collaboration continues on as we advocate for the enactment of a national law to support education of learners with disabilities. The focus on this particular sector was informed by a series of consultations and a policy mapping among duty bearers and stakeholders. Children with disabilities themselves validated in a recent consultation that what they want is to feel safe in school with classmates, teachers, and parents supporting them and to learn best and be recognized for their abilities and not their disabilities. Kasali in Filipino connotes being included. Kasali po tayo lahat. And in the coming years, we hope we are still in this together. Kasali pa rin tayo lahat sa pagtaguyon ng karapatan ng mga bata. Together, okay, we can do more. With support from stakeholders at all levels and an organizational commitment from Save the Children, the right to a quality inclusive education can be fulfilled for all children. Maganda umaga po sa inyong lahat at welcome to this research program. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Also hear the opening remarks of Peace Vice President Dr. Maripeta Gutierrez. So this forum on inclusive education is actually very timely. Uh, in the past uh, few days, we have heard the most positive news about the economy. Poverty uh, incidents have been decreased by 6.7 percentage points. Our unemployment is down by, uh, uh, by, by less than 5 percent. And exports, we are the overall champion. However, in terms of the education achievements, um, this is this is the uh, this is the, the, the news is actually not that good, not very good, or that is um, from the results of the recent um, performance um, for international student assessment or the PISA. So the Philippines. So, but I think that is not because government neglected uh, basic education in general. In fact, if you look at, at the programs in the last decade, we have been actually uh, providing uh, a lot of, uh, of, of uh, uh, programs as well as budget in terms of basic education. We have the subsidies on uh, uh, given to a uh, poor household to send their children to school. We have uh, uh, alternative Systems. We have also uh, on, uh, massive online uh, online uh, 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 education uh, 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 education online courses. So there are actually a lot of uh, uh, a lot of programs, a lot of uh, efforts uh, to improve uh, access to education. If you look at the 2019 Global Education Monitoring Report. We have some progress in terms of uh, making education accessible to all, including those in the vulnerable groups such as uh, persons with disabilities, indigenous peoples, and other communities. So, uh, to be sure, um, we we have made indeed uh, significant progress, but while. Uh, 
why we continue to rally behind universal access to education. I think I, I, when we look at, when we talk of inclusive uh, education, we should not just be focused on access itself, but access to quality education. And what does this mean? This means that uh, whether learning happens in public schools, in uh, special schools, or in, uh, in uh, alternative, or through alternative uh, modalities, the educational system should be at par with our international standards. So we should look beyond the uh, enrollment statistics and include in the programs for inclusive education strategies to improve the quality of learning for all. So if we look at the studies, uh, why is the, uh, what are the reasons why we have low quality uh, education? And according to the studies, among the stumbling blocks in attaining inclusive and quality education in the Philippines are first, the lack of teachers who possess the right skills and knowledge to handle children more so for those with special needs. The limited facilities, materials, and equipment in public schools, including in screening procedures to identify children with special needs. The lack of coordination among government agencies in the provision of educational services. The deficiency in studies and data, especially for us researchers, to back up the policies and programs <coughs> Education. So we need actually this information to, to enable us to assess whether our programs are working according to what we want to achieve. So in today's forum, we examine these challenges on inclusive education, especially for the vulnerable groups. Uh, it is important for us to engage uh, stakeholders and research so that we can uh, exchange ideas and discuss possibilities in terms of what programs and policies and strategies would be feasible uh, in, in, in our country. Um, so I urge everyone therefore to take this opportunity to actively participate in, in the different sessions uh, for today. So we have three sessions, one on the research studies on disability, studies on, on IPs and studies on out-of-school youth children or out-of-school youth children or out of school, yeah, the out-of-school youth uh, or the out-of-school children. Okay, so uh, with that, let us look forward to a productive uh, day ahead. Good morning. Thank you so much, uh, VP Ballesteros. Now for the keynote uh, message, we invited a representative from my role of PASIC, who is known for his commitment to pushing reforms in the areas of education, public health, culture, public infrastructure development, and environmental protection. Among the bills he co-authored co or authored include the Ladderized Education Act of 2014, the Scholar ng Bayan Act of 2014, the Open Distance Learning Act, the Unified Student Financial Assistance System for Tertiary Education, or UNIFAS, and the Data Privacy Act of 2012. Before he entered politics, he was an associate at the Isumbi Torres and Evangelista Law Offices and a senior associate at CCIP Salazar Hernandez and Gatmaitan Law Offices. He finished his bachelor, bachelor of a uh, bachelor degree in, in economics and bachelor of laws at the University of the Philippines in Diliman. Unfortunately, he is not with us this morning because of an equally important commitment, but his message will be delivered by attorney Devi Catalina Martinez Negre. Ma'am. Thank you. After listening to that um, introduction of uh, Congressman Roman Romano, I'm sure he would be very pleased. Um, he would have wanted to be here this morning, however, he has a uh, previous out of town engagement. Nevertheless, he knows how important this forum is. That's why he asked me to be here before you to read his message. 
Um, actually, I called out for you yesterday um, afternoon. Just wanting to be here and listen to the different researchers done, and also to help us in our policy making to help our uh, congressman Romulo. But then I was told that I have to deliver his message, so we rushed a, <laughs> a message to be read before you. Attorney Alberto Moya, Dr. Marife Balisteros, our presenters, reactors, fellow civil servants, ladies and gentlemen. Let me congratulate Save the Children and the Philippine Institute for Development Study for organizing this forum and bringing together various research studies which aim to give us insights of the real situation of children and youth who needs our special and urgent attention. At the House of Representatives, we are working tirelessly to pass bills to provide that inclusive and quality education. One of the noteworthy bills that we are seeking to enact is a bill instituting inclusive education for learners with disabilities. Through this bill, we will be able to provide learners with disabilities free and appropriate public education and related services in accordance with their needs. By this bill, we hope to facilitate the inclusion in integration of learners with disabilities into mainstream education. By this bill, we hope to be able to establish learning resource centers in each district with adequate teachers and therapists to ensure that the learners with disabilities fully develop their potential towards self-sufficiency and become fully participative members of the society. Congressman Christopher de Venecia, Chairman of the Technical Working Group, consolidating the various relate, related bills on children, um, learners with disability, and the other congressmen, members of the Committee on Basic Education, are earnestly listening and considering, considering the suggestions of the various stakeholders, including Save the Children, in creating a bill that will truly be beneficial to learners with disabilities. Inclusivity is foremost in the minds of your legislators, and we keep to heart the battle cry, no one is left behind. The right to access quality education has always been our top priority in policy making, and we are proud to help all of you as our partners in our advocacy of creating such climate conducive to learning and progress for our children, especially the disabled, the out-of-school youth, and the indigenous children, to be able to reach out to the unserved and underserved. Although we have taken many steps towards advancing inclusive and quality education, there is still much more we need to do. This is why this forum organized by Save the Children and Philippine Institute for Development Studies is of utmost significance. The discussions this morning will hopefully allow us to bridge the gap as well as ensure a meaningful and quantitative implementation of inclusive education for our children. May we, through the strength that we share with one another, take more significant steps in recognizing, protecting, and expanding the rights to education of the children and youth. Magandang umaga po. Thank you so much for that well-delivered message, Attorney Devi. May I now request um, Attorney Muyot and VP Peng to please hand over our token of appreciation to Attorney Devi. call on our speakers and our reactors to have a quick photo opportunity with Attorney Negre, Attorney Muyot, and Dr. Ballesteros. And then after the photo opportunity, we will pose for a health break and then we'll start the sessions at exactly 9.50.
or even earlier. Okay, so may I request uh, all the speakers who are present here and the uh, reactors to please join Doc Attorney Muyot, Dr. Ballesteros, and Attorney Derby on stage, please. So thank you everyone for your cooperation. We'll pause for a few minutes for our health break. And uh, we'll start our uh, first session at exactly 9.40. Thank you.